Yeah. Very good. Okay. 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 Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank okay. You. Bye. Okay. So we'll see what we can do. So this is the back of the Capitol. The dome you can just about see here. Well, you know, I'm not only Albanian on my father's side. I'm I'm a Roman Catholic, and uh, obviously I heard about Mother Teresa uh, many years before I became a congressman. She was already very famous. In fact, I remember as a congressman, President Reagan inviting her to Washington, and she was at a, a prayer breakfast at that time, and then she returned to a prayer breakfast when I was there in the early 90s. Her love for the poor and what she did in India, don't forget, when she, was, uh, when she died, she was given a state funeral in India where she started her missionary work in 1949. Uh, she took the poorest of the poor, the people who were dying on the streets, who had leprosy that no one would touch, and she would take them in her arms and she would bring them into the home of the nuns, wash them, clean them, put clothes on them. She knew they were going to die, but she gave them dignity and she said, I brought a smile to their face as they were dying. This is the Mother Teresa that loved everybody, everything, and as she said, love until it hurts. And that was her kind of philosophy. You might say that uh, I have a special place in my heart for Mother Teresa, as all Albanians do. And I am particularly proud this year because I am now the chairman of the dinner for the Mother Teresa Cathedral that we're building in Pristina. Hey, don't forget, I was working with Bishop Sopi when Bishop Sopi and Ibrahim Rogova made sure they got the right property for this, but unfortunately they are both now not with us anymore. Uh, and we have now Bishop uh, Dodd Georgi, who is a young, very spirited Albanian bishop who has really made this his top priority. And uh, we brought him here last uh, November, and we brought him to the cathedral to meet uh, Cardinal Egan, but we also brought him to Our Lady of Scotia, where we formed a committee to raise money to make sure this cathedral, Catholic Church, cathedral, Albanian cultural center, library, and museum is going to be built fast and, and completely. Why is this important? Because it's going to be a symbol for the Albanians throughout the world that Mother Teresa is an Albanian. Many people today said, oh, she's Yugoslavian, or she's from Macedonia, or she's Indian. A, a lot of people, Albanians know she's Albanian, but many Americans don't know she is an ethnic Albanian, born in Albanian lands before, uh, you know, Macedonia was created. Uh, and now people say she's born in Shkup but we know that that was part of Albania at the time. So to have this cathedral in the name of Mother Teresa is gonna be the best thing, I think, for the Albanian national cause. And to have it in Pristina, everybody says, because the Serbs and the Greeks are always saying, oh, all these Albanians in Kosovo are Muslim, 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 you know, because they're trying to make them look bad politically. But here now we have, right on the best piece of property in the middle of Pristina, the capital, this wonderful cathedral uh, bearing the name of Mother Teresa as a symbol of the tolerance of the Albanian people who share four religions, the Islamic faith, the Catholic faith, the Orthodox faith, and yes, even the Jewish faith. 10 years ago, very few would know that she was Albanian. Today, more know, but I'll bet you the majority still does not know she's an Albanian because they heard so much about her state funeral in India, where she's buried, because that's where she did her charitable work and as I said, to the poorest of the poor. And then they know because the Macedonians and the Serbs have always said she was Yugoslavian. And they had Belgrade, you know, which had all of the press. And the uh, Macedonians and the Greeks have always claimed, you know, she's from Yugoslavia. Because they didn't want, I guess, let the Albanian feel that people feel they were that important that they had one of the most important living saints maybe in history with them. But now it's out. And when this cathedral is built, Everybody will know that Mother Teresa is, was an Albanian and is still in every Albanian heart. And she's going to be the best thing for the image, for the, the good public image, a good face for the Albanian people because of the love that she stood for. You could see the reception she got when she came to the White House to meet President Reagan. You could see the reception she got when she was on the uh, dais at the prayer breakfast with the Clintons one time and here she's talking about the fact that we have to protect everyone even the babies in the womb that abortion is a moral evil 
and here she's sitting in between Mr. and Mrs. Clinton, who was <laughs> actually for, you know, they were not pro-life the way Mother Teresa was. But she still gave that speech to show the world that politics was not important as what you believe in, and God's more important than even Washington. That was the point she wanted to make. But she was received like a head of state by President Reagan and by everyone else. And when she was at that prayer breakfast, every congressman wanted to go and say hello to her or try to take a picture. And obviously, she was not much for publicity. In fact, I remember asking her when I went to see her in 1992 for the first time that I, I said, well, um, how do you raise money? Because I'd like to raise money. She says, we don't ask people for money. We do good work. And if they like what we do, they then, we accept the money. I says, well, I, I want to do something. Can I offer some? It's up to you. And at that point, I had a $50 bill, and I gave it to Sister Antrim. She would not take it. I said, well, this is my pleasure then to offer this because you've done so many good things. And uh, if I could do more, I will try. She never asked me to do more, but that's why I'm so happy now to be the chairman of this dinner and on the executive, executive committee for this cathedral, because I feel now I'm doing for her and for the church and for the Albanian people what I wanted to do years ago when I asked her that question. And this is Mother Teresa's Anyway poem. And I'll take my glasses out now that I'm 67. I wanna, don't wanna miss any words here. She said, people are often unreasonable illogical and self-centered, forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway, she said. If you find serenity and happiness, people may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. And finally, she says, give the world the best you have. And it may never be enough, but give the world the best you have anyway. Now. I think this is beautiful because it shows you the positive spirit she had that under the worst conditions when she was in India, she had a smile on her face. Why? Because she believed in something more than the material things of the earth. My dear friends, welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral. We're delighted to have you here with us on this day in which we remind ourselves of the blessings of the Albanian people over the centuries and commit ourselves to praying for the Albanian people over the years to come. Mayor Dita, thank you all for coming on this important day for all Albanians, Albanian Independence Day. What a wonderful thing to be doing right here in the middle of Manhattan. We all pray to the same God, and today we're doing it in the spirit of Mother Teresa. She said at one point, to love until it hurts. And we all know Mother Teresa as an Albanian icon. But I'm going to read you something from 
another icon in the Catholic Church, Francis of Assisi, St. Francis of Assisi, because it sets the tone for what you're here for today, love, tolerance, equality, justice. Now imagine Europe in the year 1220. It was not an easy place for social justice. St. Francis, like Mother Teresa, loved all things. He wouldn't hurt a fly. He loved the animals. He loved the flowers. Anything in God's creation, St. Francis loved. And here in the year 1220, almost 800 years ago, he writes this letter to the kings and queens of Europe because he is so disheartened and disturbed by the difference between the rich and the poor and social inequality. Imagine this letter being sent today to the prime ministers and the presidents of the countries in the United Nations. Nothing has changed in 800 years. Listen to the words of St. Francis of Assisi, the founder of the Franciscan Order of Missionaries. To the rulers of people, keep a clear eye towards life's end. Do not forget your purpose and destiny as God's creature. What you are in his sight is what you are and nothing more. Do not let worldly cares and anxieties or pressures of office blot out the voice of God's spirit guiding you in your great task of leading humanity to wholeness, wholeness. Remember that when you leave this earth, you can take with you nothing that you have received, whether fading symbols of honor or trappings of power, but only what you have given, a full heart enriched by honest service, love, sacrifice, and courage. Embrace the God of us all and imitate his preference for the poor and the powerless. Enter into his plan of liberating all peoples from everything that oppresses them and obstructs their development as human beings. And finally, in his real exhortation to the rulers, of Europe, he says, help remove unjust social structures and patterns of exploitation. Uphold the rights and dignity of the human person. Foster the creation of a society, a society where human life is cherished and where all peoples of the planet can enjoy its gifts, which God created for all in a spirit of love, justice, and equality. That was the year 1220. I dare say that that would be very appropriate today for our leaders in the world. Thank you for coming. Your Eminence, thank you so much. It was about six months ago that I was with His Eminence at a Catholic youth organization dinner, and I was telling him about the traditions of the Albanian people and how so many people of the Muslim faith actually go with their friends and family members into the churches, the Catholic churches, Your Eminence, for Christmas and Easter. And I said, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could do something on Albanian Independence Day, especially this year when we expect the independence of Kosovo, so that all Albanians and others of different faiths, Catholics, Orthodox, Muslims, Jews, can pray together. Shirley and I, Your Eminence, just returned from Jerusalem. It took four years to take the photos of almost 200 Albanian families who saved all the Jewish people that were in Albania, about 200, and another 2,000 that managed to escape from Yugoslavia and Western Europe. That is now in Yad Vashem, and it shows the tolerance of the Albanian people, majority Muslim, but Orthodox and Catholics, that they risked their lives in order to save those guests in their homeland, the Jewish people. And that exhibit is coming here in New York on January 27th on Memorial Holocaust, Worldwide Memorial Holocaust Day uh, at the United Nations. So, Your Eminence, this was a wonderful way to follow up on that 
exhibition. And I think in the spirit of Mother Teresa and St. Francis of Assisi, we have to remember that tolerance is the only way that anything can be gained in the world to respect others for who they are, and hopefully they will respect us. We will have a reception for all of you that are here downstairs with uh, His Eminence and Bishop Georgi and Ivan Kukai and Rabbi Wohl. I hope you will all come downstairs for some refreshments before you, uh, you go. And happy Independence Day. Gazua uh, Dita Iflamoret. Gazur Dita Iflamoret. Happy Flag Day. As we celebrate Flag Day here in this wonderful cathedral, let us think about and pray for our brothers and sisters in Albania, in Kosovo, in Macedonia, in Montenegro, in Presheva, Medveja, Buyanos, and Chamria. And let us give a moment of silence to all those who died in the war and who are now unjustly imprisoned. Love thee. Happy Flag Day, and I am sure that everyone here will join us with feelings of great appreciation to Cardinal Egan for this wonderful homily, to Father Michael Sullivan, who you may not know, who made this very possible, and to Bishop Jerji, Father Popeye, Imam Kukai, and Rabbi Wool for enabling us all to affirm Albanians as Muslims, Christians, and Jews living in harmony and giving tolerance to the world. This was such a wonderful expression of love and tolerance today, having you here and representing the, the Jewish faith. And I've known you for a long time in Temple Israel. And, Absolutely. Uh, you, you, it seems right. like you, you don't grow old. They say that about me, but I think you young. too. But it was just great to be here in the cathedral, and Cardinal Egan did us a big favor on Independence Day for the yeah. Albanian people, and to have you and the Imam and Bishop Georgi from Kosovo. Uh, and I just wanted you to say a few words as to what this means from your perspective. Yeah. Well, it means to me that every people should be free. Every people is entitled to their fulfilling their identity and their culture. And in the case of the Albanians who've been subjugated so long, and those who in Kosovo and elsewhere, it just it's exhilarating to see that a new dawn is breaking. Yes. And it's there, and we know it. And I think that the fact that this Independence Day was celebrated here in this great cathedral and that the Cardinal was 100% behind it yes. and believes in it so thoroughly just really gave us all, gave me a feeling of exhilaration and meeting the people coming into the reception, seeing their real earnestness and fervor and they just weren't relaxed about this. They are ready to be mobilized and ready to act yes. on behalf of freedom. You know, I remember what Pope John Paul II said when he met the rabbi, uh, the head yeah. rabbi in Rome. Rome. He referred to the, the, the Jewish people as our elder our brothers. Our older brother. That was beautiful. And, and that was wonderful. Beautiful. And, and that's really what right. this is all about. Right. We are brothers and sisters and Right. And this is what's coming across here. I know you've done a marvelous job in Westchester County yeah. with your interfaith, and that's no, I kind of I thought of you as soon as right. I, I had that's this a idea. It's privilege for me to be here. We'll look forward to more occasions Thanks. where we can participate. God bless you. God Shalom. bless you. Shalom. <laughs> Keep it up. Bye. Imam Gazim Hazanagoli, okay. Brooklyn. Is it the Islamic Center in Brooklyn? It is, and as a matter of fact, it's the oldest Islamic center in New York and in is, America. Is that where my old friend Issa Hoja yes, was? Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, we all miss him. I mean, you talk about someone who embodied Mother Teresa's um, feelings about love, kindness, that and tolerance. Such. He was beautiful. And I'm so happy to see you here. Thank you very much, and, Congressman. Uh, I just, I guess I want to get you on record as uh, an imam. Uh, 
to say what this meant to you. I know you saw Iman Kukai up there, and if I had known you were in the audience, I probably would have told you to put your garb on and come up yourself. That, that is, that is, for, that is okay. Uh, Congressman De Guardi, it's, it's a great feeling to be here today. It's a cathedral, a worshiping place, and all Albanians, all the clergy talking about the day we celebrate today. I mean, as I said, it's a great day. And as you mentioned before, Imam Isa Hoja, we all miss him. Yes. He was a great man, a great Muslim leader for the Albanians. And above all, he was... A great person. Yep. That's what it was. So um, it's, it's, a, it's great to be here today. Thank you. And from an Albanian point of view, we need to keep promoting and projecting our tolerance. We know who we are as a people. But if you listen to what our neighbors are saying, especially the Slavic, you wouldn't think we're the same people. So it's important to do what we just did in Jerusalem, the photos of the Albanian families, mainly Muslim families, who saved the Jews. And it was important to be here today. And I'm so happy that our friend, His Eminence, Cardinal Edward Egan, allowed us to do this. Congressman, not everybody understands the greatness of today. The meeting we had, you know, the prayers and everything. But we as Albanians, it, it's a known fact that we have been always tolerant among each other, among the religious differences that we have. Uh, as, 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 the, as one of Albanian historian and, and writers says, uh, Albanianship or Albaniandom is above all. So, uh, and and I, I felt great to hear that in somewhere in Jerusalem there was a museum being held some yeah, time ago. Sure. This is what yeah, with the photos and names yes. of Albanian families. And it's coming here on January 27th. You, I can describe the pride I feel about that. Wonderful. I can't. Really. I'm so happy that you can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we're with Imam Tahir Kukai of the Staten Island Islamic Center. Thank you so much for coming today. This was a wonderful expression of Albanian tolerance and to hear it from Cardinal Egan, not another yes. Albanian, is beautiful. And here we had Rabbi Wool, we had you. And I just wanted to be sure we had you on tape just briefly to say in your own, word, your own words what this meant to you today as a uh, Imam uh, in the Muslim faith. Uh, thank you, Congressman Duguardi. It has been uh, great honor and uh, great pleasure as well, in the meantime, being in the house of God to pray for the independence of uh, Kosovo and Albania, of course, to celebrate the independence of Albania. And it was a uh, great joy to hear the cardinal, the, the good words that he said about Albanians and Albanian traditions, and of course, the rabbi as well. I believe this is uh, good, uh, not only good, this is a very good uh, testimony from people of knowledge, people of God, people of uh, knowing the history. Uh, in the way that I see it, these people, they would like to please God before they please everybody else. So when they say these words, I believe these words, they come out of their hearts, yes. which this is a very good recognition from very special people to a very special nation, which is Albanians. Thank you for those very, very heartfelt words. You know, we stand kind of on the shoulders of Mother Teresa. She uh, was the embodiment of love. She said that we have to love all people, and as she said, you have to love until it hurts. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to keep projecting who we are as people by showing our tolerance, being here in this cathedral today, you coming here today was very important with Rabbi Wool. And uh, hopefully this will be the first in many flag days where we all pray together. Yes, uh, yes uh, this is actually, this is not my first time praying in a church for our issue. I have pr uh, prayed with uh, Peter uh, Popeye yes. in the uh, church. I remember. Uh, in, uh, I think it was in April or May, I'm yes, not quite sure. I remember. And I have been even uh, in other churches as well here in New York and uh, Staten Island, especially delivering the message of uh, Albanian Muslims, asking uh, American uh, Christian believers and even Jewish believers. I've been in synagogues as well, Correct. expressing our 
point of view, who we are, we have the diversity, and we are the, we can say without no exaggeration, we are the best example of nation lives in Europe who never knew the discrepancies or problems of the wars uh, based on religion. We, when we fought as Albanians against Greek and against Serbs, we didn't fight them because they are uh, Orthodox. We fought them because they have occupied our lands. But we have Albanian Orthodox, we have Albanian uh, Catholics. So this example of uh, tolerance and spirit of understanding, I believe uh, nations in uh, Europe and around the globe, they should take it uh, as a good lesson from Albanians. And you know something? We have Albanian Jews, and I met with the community. Shirley and I went to Jerusalem three weeks ago for the opening of the exhibit at Yad Vashem yeah. of all the Albanians, mainly Muslims, that saved the Jews. And we found the daughter of uh, Yosef Yakuel, uh, her name is Felicita, the one who brought the 200 Jewish people from Albania to Jerusalem mm -hmm. in 1991. Now there were 400 Albanian Jews. And as mm -hmm. he was leaving Albania, mm -hmm. yeah, in Israel, mm -hmm. as he was leaving Albania, and some of them were in Albanian lands for 2,000 years from the dispersion from the burning of the Second Temple. Mm -hmm. But as he was leaving Albania, Yosef Yakuel said, we can never forget Albanians and the Albanian people in our hearts. And that's what they said to me and Shirley in Jerusalem just three weeks ago. So we have 400 now, a community of 400 Albanian Jews in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. And hopefully we'll bring them here, some of them, so that we can meet them again. Uh, last year, in, uh, in uh, 17th, January 17, actually this year, but it was in the beginning of 2007, uh, I was invited to a, a special meeting with the community, uh, Albanian community and Jewish community as well, Anti-Defamation League. They have brought Albanian family from Albania who yes. they saved the I was there. Jewish was family. That was, an, yes. this was uh, another recognition from the Jews and others as well because most of the people, they, they were not only Jews, they were a lot of uh, New Yorkers. So they seen the, exam the yes. uh, practical example of, of uh, Albanians, the Muslims, yes. they saved Jews and they gave their lives to save the yes. Jews. And believe me, Albanians have been saving others for a lot of, uh, in a lot of occasions. Uh, just recently, people, they started, uh, or we can say they have been uh, expressing this, because before, as we know, the communist mm -hmm. regime was cutting all, all of our, our ties, actually, with the, the yeah. external world. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. And we look forward to coming to your mosque and praying. Yes, yes. I just came back from Jalan where I prayed yes, yes, in the mosque there. It was wonderful. Thank you.